the UK's immigration system is Islamophobic and racist. We're going to read into this more from Byline Times, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Lee here with an article from Byline Times with the headline that the UK's immigration system is Islamophobic and racist. Expanding prevent into it will re-traumatise refugees. The extension of the controversial counter-extremism programme into immigration and asylum process risks embedding racism at our borders. Guys, just before we go any further, if you can hit the like button and share across social media so other people are aware of this video. So... I've talked uh, on many occasions about how our police force here in the UK, in particular England, especially England, I don't think it, I can't, can't really judge Wales uh, police in Wales and Scotland. And the reason why I bring them up is that we have there has been numerous uh, stories and and uh, information out there that's confirmed that the police is institutionally racist in in England. Uh, there are the trust that people have in the in the police force in England is at an all-time low. It's very, very low. Um, and I've always said that there are always one or two good officers. I know there are always people who always say that all of them are the same, but I, I, I will not accept that in any way, shape or form because I've met and I've known some police officers who are not like that. And I, I won't accept that premise that all police officers are racist, uh, bad and all this kind of stuff. I, there are uh, there are some good officers and I will, I will never change my position on that, no matter how much you... You, you may think, yeah, that they all are. Now, while there, of course, there are major, major issues and there is an exception to that, there is an institutional problem with, with, with the police force. There is also this where we have here. Now, this headline about UK immigration system is Islamic phobic and racist as this really upsets me. But at the same time, this does not surprise me. And I mean, in all honesty, I don't think it's going to surprise any of you either when you read, think about that headline because how many of you who are watching, who are not white, who are not British, who have gone in and out of the United Kingdom through our borders and feel intimidated by, by our border force? Yeah. It is, can be, you know, since, since, the, since we left the EU... I want to share with you guys as well that I've twice now been into the into the U into the EU since we since we uh, had Brexit, and I can tell you on both occasions it felt very intimidating to go into that uh, passport um, passport controls and get asked questions and whatnot. And while I may be a white British individual and may seem perfectly innocent to them, they have to be very careful because they never know who could be coming into their country. Now, I'm trying to put myself in the, in the shoes of, of somebody who is not white and is not British, or maybe even maybe uh, of a different religion, and I'm seen indifferently because of that. And why? It is because of where they've come from, or is it because of things that have happened history-wise that we assume, we have this perception that we assume that because someone of a religious background or of a skin colour, of a nationality, we automatically have this assumption, this perception that this person is trouble, that this person is going to be bad. Why do we make that assumption? It's because it's in our DNA and it's a bad thing and it's a, it's a terrible thing to have and we should not look at people like that. And I want to make another premise as well before we uh, read into the article as well. I have worked uh, in my life. I have worked with uh, a person of Muslim faith. I have worked of people with uh, Christianity faith. I've worked with people. Uh, I've worked with non-binary people. I've worked with uh, people from India, from Africa, from Kenya, who are within uh, my working life. I've worked with all sorts of people with different nationalities and backgrounds. And I can tell you, hand on my heart, that I've never looked at them and saw them as a threat or a danger to me. I never had this perception on me that because 
uh, because of their different skin colour or nationality or religion that, that there is anything wrong with them. I've never had that. I've never had that perception on me. But obviously, for some people who are watching, they have never had uh, the, the opportunity to meet people like them to work with people like them, to get to know people like them. So you don't really know what they're like until you actually spend time with these people of different skin colors, of different backgrounds, of different ethnicities. So you're with your own people. And so when you're with your own people all the time, and when there is a perception that, that everyone around you, that everybody else is bad, and yet your group is okay, you have this perception created about, about them. Yet you've never even had a genuine discussion, a genuine sit down and a chat with them. And this is the thing, yeah. You have to make sure, guys, that you don't just assume what newspapers tell you and what they say. Even if one as reliable as Barline Times. Stop and think. Sit down and talk with these people. Yeah, and don't assume. You know, the friend of mine who, who, um, who I don't talk with much anymore... He's a Muslim. I, you know, he, he. I remember one time he was telling me about how he constantly, always gets attacked because of, because he's a Muslim. He gets verbally abused. Um, he's been assaulted simply because he's a Muslim. And you know who I've no, I've never seen him anything but a good person, a family man, uh, a friend, just somebody who's just trying to live their life. And that's all I've seen him as. And the reason that I've seen him nothing more as that is because I've got to know him and spend time with him. But for some people, they don't get they don't know that because they've never had that in their they've never had that in their lifetimes to be able to sit and work or spend time with different people of different cultures and backgrounds. So how do you know that a whole ideology of somebody, an ideology of people, or a whole na nationality of people. How do you know what they really are unless you actually spend time with them? And the answer is, you just don't know. But you assume that you know. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I know everything, because that's just simply not true. But I'm basing my opinions and my thoughts on past experience. And that's my best way of making my judgment about it. Now, I understand that we have a crisis when it comes to immigration in this country. Don't make no mistake about it. I understand that. I really do. Because we've talked enough about it. But try and... I always tell people, no matter how much you how much you, you, you are concerned about the, the levels coming in, please try to put yourself in their shoes. You know, think about, yeah, the, the sacrifices that they have had to make. It's easy for them to say that they should stay in one place. Until you actually sit down and talk with these people, you just don't know what they're going through, guys. Now that I've got that out of the way, let's read into this topic about the UK immigration system. Being Islamophobic and racist. Because I think, yeah, there'll be more into this than we actually already know. Migration is not an isolated issue. It is intertwined with political party agendas, geopolitics, conflict, or global labour demands, while systems of oppression like homophobia, racism, and sexism form the basis of those who consider to be welcomed in the West. The exclusivity and discriminating nature of migration politics is often overlooked. At the Migrants' Right Network, we believe border regimes and immigration systems have roots in racism and Islamophobia. Now, as prevent could forcibly impose into imagination and asylum processes, migration advocacy organisations and Muslim organisations must wake up to Islamophobia grip on UK border regimes. Excuse me. Prevent is used as a form of surveillance, and at present, the prevent jury requires particular public face authorisations such as education, health, local authorities, police, and criminal justice agencies to prevent people from being drawn into terrorism. It is a fundamentally flawed and discriminatory mechanism that leads to thousands of people, mainly Muslim, being treated with suspicion on the basis they are assumed to be more likely to commit crime such as terrorism. Now, while of course we must try to make sure that those who are discriminately indiscriminated because of who they are, we mustn't allow them to fall into the into into the path of terrorism and Islamophobia. That is not to say that all Muslims 
are going down that path. That's not the case. But but as a society, those who live in our society, um, we must also make sure that they don't ever go down that path in any way, shape or form. But it is also we also have a responsibility of our own non-Muslims to make sure that we treat them as that, as I'm sure that they would try to treat us with dig dignity and respect. Because that's how you want to be treated, isn't it not? In December 2023, the Home Office published an independent review of Prevent's report and the government's response uh, by William Shake Shawcross, an independent reviewer of Prevent, in which he recommends the government explore extensive Prevent into the immigration and asylum system. The expansion of the Prevent duty into the UK's immigration system will further enable embedded racism and Islamophobia at borders. This is based on the migration status of individuals who commit uh, alleged terror attacks in the UK over the last few years. Specifically, he states people that who are fleeing conflict zones or are parts of the world where extremism ideologies have strong presence and are more likely to be susceptible to racialization, especially if they're deeply disappointed by their reception in the UK. It drives them further down there. If, they, if you come into the UK and you've been through a lot, and you come here with the intention of obviously want to work, want to contribute, have want to have a great life and everything, and you come in here and you're you're just treated like dog dog crap. You know, what else is there left for them? That that in itself could turn and radicalise them. It's very easy to radicalise someone when they're physically it's very easy to radicalise someone when they're physically and mentally broken, when nobody will care for them, nobody looks after them. Where else are they supposed to go? It's very easy to manipulate a broken man. But if you inspire someone, they can really make a difference to people's lives. There is an explicit emphasis on Islamic extremism into, in the review and little to no reference of countries with high rates of white supremacy or far-right activities such as Ukraine. This highlights the increasing trend for migration to be viewed through the lens of national security, in particular migration for Muslim-majority countries because Muslims are viewed far to the Islamophobic assumption of their proximity to terrorism. It also seeks to effectively punish people for the barriers within the UK immigration system and how they are treated. The UK's immigration measures are already disproportionately impacted rationalised and Muslim communities. Muslims are the most impacted by deprivation and citizenship powers. Seven out of ten irregular arrivals uh, to the UK are from Muslim-majority countries, in Akarita as a result of a lack of safe routes to seek protections in the UK. And Muslims bear the brunt of racist integration narratives and interlaced border controls, such as the right-to-work checks. In the review, Shawcross claims that Prevent is not doing enough to counter non-violent Islamic extremism and goes on to say represents the primary terrorist threat to the UK. However, Muslims are arguably persistently perceived as a threat and treated with suspicion around their loyal so-called British values. <coughs> Deprivatisation of citizenship has been used to strip British citizens of citizenships on the grounds of national security. Yeah, we forget about that, don't we? You remember how um, you know how easily they can strip away citizenship from people. How how wrong is that? After being accused of sub suspected terrorist activities, evidence so subject of citizenship a deep deprivatisation on national security ground have been almost exclusively Muslim and from Middle Eastern, South or West Asian or North African backgrounds. We also see this construction of Muslims as a threat in a single way male asylum seekers are presented in the British media and political discourse. Orientalist stereotypes of men, specifically men of colour and Muslim men, painted them as violent, threatening and backwards as well as oppressive towards women and girls, while an intersectional approach to migration advocacy is largely absent. How constructs of masculinity impact male migrants is completely non-existent. At the Migrants' Right Network, we are unpacking how these stereotypes and other systems of oppressions intercept to shape immigra immigration policies through Who is Welcome campaign. The Prevent Review draws on integrated stereotypes about people from Muslim communities. One per se data in the review is that is Islamism is at odds with the West because it doesn't, excuse me, 
excuse me. It doesn't believe in the separation of religion or state, liberal values or democracy. This is a well-established Islamophobic trope because Islam is characterised as the anesthetics to British, i.e. liberal values and feeds into this clash of civilization ideas. Yeah, so the, obviously the perception that people have is that is that Muslim, the perception that people have in this heart, in this mindset is that Brit, is that Muslims are coming to take their jobs and take their lives and everything. When when the perception is they just want to come and contribute to society just like everybody else. That that's what the real reality is, but that's not how people see it. Whereas instead of us all working together for a better for a better prosperity, people would rather have this idea of being divided, or the perception of that is being created. This draws onto the long history of Ontario's stereotypes, an idea that was laid out in Louise Casey's 2016 review on opportunity and integration, which links Islam to those who are keen to take back religion backwards and away from the 21st century British values and laws on issues such as gender equality and sexual orientation, creating segregation and pulling communities apart. Shaw Cross goes on to claim Islamic endeavours is an imperialist one. This is an unusual and bold claim, particularly given that the West long intervagonist and colonial history in Muslim majority regions, Iraq, Sudan, Syria, Afghanistan are just one of the few countries that continue to bear the brunt of continuous colonization, imperialist exports and Western intervention. And where many of the refugees arrive from, they are some of those who face the sharpest end of hostile environment in the UK. Yeah. How many times have I talked about uh, what happens in Sudan, guys? The, the, the conflict's happening in Sudan. What's happening in Syria? Syria is consistently in, Syri in civil war right now. Iraq, we already know about the history of Iraq, Afghanistan as well. Like, they've all gone through absolutely hell. And it's hard for people to want to stay in those countries considering what they've gone through. Numerous ideas set out the review all stems from the idea of Muslims as a threat. It seeks to use integrated stereotypes to justify greater surveillance power against them. Expanding prevent into the immigration and asylum system will ultimately further embed hostile treatment towards racialized migrants. For those keen for us seeking to, ach to achieve liberation and justice for migrants, we must be vigilant and to the threat that prevent poses to migrate and migrated communities, especially those with Muslim backgrounds. Uh, yes, of course, we have to make sure that we protect those of those backgrounds for certain guys. Like I've said, I've shared my story about how I have lived and uh, how I've worked with various different people from different uh, backgrounds. And this perception that we have of Muslims, we need to change that. Um, but it's not just something that you can change, obviously, from just what you do. It's, it's how you change that from a perspective of how the next generation perceives them because no one is born racist no one is born indiscriminately it is something that is taught and is passed on no child is born no child is born racist you know i remember my times in the school playground i never saw the perception of kids uh, of black and white kids i just saw them as kids and that's that's how you saw them you know racism is taught not something that people are born with and it's really important to remember that we need to root out those who pass it on that's one of the things that i generally believe that that needs to be done how it can be done i know it's an impossible challenge i know there will always be people looking to take advantage of us there's always going to be people out there but we have to protect the muslim communities in the uk those who come to the, those muslim communities in the uk in england Wales, where, wherever they, they are, they come here to work, to contribute and be part of society here in the United Kingdom. But there is obviously this perception that they are all evil and they're all bad, and that's not true at all. There will be some bad people, but there's like, there is, there is bad, there is bad white British people. There is bad black, black British people. There's bad people in every, every society. But that does not mean just because a small percentage is bad that you paint everyone in the same perception. That's not how you, how society is. This is what this is what the the right wing and cultural people want to do. They want to divide us instead of attacking and blaming the people in like fifty five Tufton Street. They would rather have us attack each other. 
rather than have us divided, rather than have us united against them. It's really important to remember that. I found this argument and this article very interesting, guys. Well, what did you guys make of it? What do you guys think of some of my thoughts? Let me know what your feelings are in the comment section down below. If you found this video interesting, hit the like button. Be greatly appreciated. Share it across social media so other people are notified of it too. And hit that bell notification icon so you'll be notified of when I upload another video. And subscribe because it really does support the channel. And if you want to financially support me in the work I do here, you can do so by becoming a YouTube member for just 99p or joining me on Patreon for exclusive content. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I hope to catch you all very, very soon.